What I'm going to show you now is, now that you've chosen a radius to use for your photometry, how you would actually do the photometry. Now this will vary somewhat depending on what you're doing photometry with, if you're doing it with an open cluster or if you're doing it with a transit or if you're doing it for some other thing. So I'm just going to try to give you a general explanation and then um, hopefully you'll be able to apply it to other situations. So what you would do is you'd have Salsa J open and then also normally a spreadsheet or some kind of place to organize your data. And what you would do is open up one of the files you're going to look at. So I'll go to File, Open, and here's the window. And I'm going to choose the file we looked at before when we were choosing the radius and say OK. And again, it came in really large, so I'm going to resize it down, change the contrast again so we can see what we're looking at. Okay, now before we can start the photometry, we need to use the radius that we chose before. And I said at the end of the last um, tutorial that I thought six or seven would be best. So what we'll do is we'll go to photometry settings. Try that again, photometry settings, and we get this. And I'm going to use a forced sky radius here of six. We were saying six or seven in the last one and I'm going to choose a sky radius to make my results more accurate. I'm going to double this or a little bit more and I'm going to say about 13 for the sky radius. And then I can minimize this or move it behind. I'll just minimize it so it's out of the way. Now what we can do is go to Analyze Photometry. And we'll get this window. I've been doing photometry earlier today, which is why I have some values in here already. Um, Yours will be blank the first time you do it. And every time you open Salsa J, it will, it will be blank again. So any new values I get will come in down here. Now, now that I've already said start photometry, so I don't have to do that again. And I can just click on stars in my image. Oops, I'm on the magnification tool. What I need to do is uh, click on something else so that I'm not magnifying my image every time I touch it. Actually, I'm going to make it smaller again so you can see it. There we go. I'm going to click off the magnification tool, and now I can do photometry. So this is going to depend very much what you're doing. If you're doing an open cluster, you're going to want to get um, photometry, get brightnesses for all of the stars in this frame and probably another frame. Or if you're doing a planet transit, you would have a lot of different FITS files and you would be, be opening them one by one and just doing photometry on a couple stars in the frame. Or if you were doing a supernova, again, you'd be doing the supernova and a couple other comparison stars. So I'm just going to show you what the process looks like and then you can apply it to your situation. So if I want to find the brightness of a star, I just click on that star. And then what I get here in this box, it shows a radius of let me move this down, a radius of 6 here. That's because we've forced the radius to be 6 under radius here. Intensity is the amount of light from the star. X and Y tells you the coordinates, where we were in the image. And you can see up here, um, but not when I'm hovering over the box, as I move over the picture, the X and Y values are changing. Right now, X is 198, Y is 947. If I move way down here, X is 868, or 874 now, and Y is 99. So that can give you an idea of where you are in your image. And sometimes that's a good thing to take note of if you're going to be doing photometry on all the stars in your frame. It's good to have one column of your spreadsheet be like the location of the star, and then you could put your um, X and Y coordinates in there. So if I was doing um, one of the stars that we were looking at, if I, would, if I did, had done photometry on this star, um, I could get the X and Y from here and enter 511, 658 right over here. And then you often want to know the image name if you're going to be going through a lot of different images. So you might have something in your spreadsheet like image or file name that can be useful. Okay, and then 
some other things you might want to note down what radius you used somewhere in your file. And then you would normally have a, um, an intensity column. And that's where you would put the value we got over here, this 148377.88. Um, now, the sky has already been subtracted for you, and salsa j is telling you what value it used, but it's done. So you don't need to do any sky subtraction. By forcing the sky value, that sky radius that we changed, we told salsa j where we wanted to get the sky value from, but you don't have to do any subtraction. So, um, depending on what kind of photometry you're doing, um, you know exactly how you do it will be different. You may click on lots of different stars in an image like this and probably try to be more organized about it than this. But then you could then copy your results out of this table into your spreadsheet or you may every time just be getting photometry for three or four stars like this. Then going file, open, opening another file saying OK, and then doing photometry on another image. So um, on the LCOGT website, there are examples and screencasts to show you more in detail for each type of project what you might be doing. But this is a general overview of how to do photometry and um, kind of what the what the parts of the process in salsa J are.